There exists a well-documented issue with the standard IPCC climate change hypothesis. This channel, Community, has previously detailed the issue known as the Holocene Temperature Conundrum. It is where a long-term cooling trend of global average temperature took place when the atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases were increasing. This event contradicts the IPCC and COP27 global warming hypothesis that when the atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases increase, then this should cause global average temperature to increase. The seriousness of this issue is sometimes, and perhaps intentionally, obscured by the notion that it took place before 1850 and the start of the modern recording of climate data. But now, as COP27 takes place, there exists a very modern temperature conundrum that is being recorded with the latest techniques of modern climate science. Since January 2015, global average temperature has been on a decreasing trend, but greenhouse gas atmospheric concentration levels have been increasing. For a full context, we can take one minute to demonstrate the older Holocene temperature conundrum. We take the period starting 6,000 years ago at 4,000 BCE and ending 4,000 years later at the year zero. We look at the atmospheric concentrations of the IPCC designated greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide and methane. Carbon dioxide concentration measured in parts per million increased over that period. Nitrous oxide concentration measured in parts per billion increased over that period. Methane concentration measured in parts per billion increased over that period. But global average temperature over the same 4,000 years did not increase. It decreased. GMST, in fact, cooled at an average rate of minus 0.08 degrees Celsius per 1,000 years. And to confirm, this cooling trend occurred while the atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases were increasing. That covers the well-known historical Holocene temperature conundrum. We now look at the very modern temperature conundrum, which, as stated earlier, is being recorded with the latest techniques of modern climate science. First, the annually recorded period of 2015 to 2021. Carbon dioxide concentration has continued to rise throughout this period of seven years. Nitrous oxide concentration has continued to rise. Methane concentration has continued to rise. But from the latest NOAA data, global average temperature decreased at a rate of minus 0.09 degrees Celsius per decade. Bringing this right up to date, we can now extend this analysis to the very latest month covered by NOAA, September 2022. Carbon dioxide concentration continues its wave-like pattern of rise. While global average temperature continues its negative trend over a period that is now approaching eight years. Perhaps not significantly, but it should be noted the rate of decrease has intensified from 0 0.09 to 0 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade. Having seen the latest climate science data, we can now discuss some of the implications. A wider perspective of the current temperature conundrum will be very useful. We have seen that the globe has, since January 2015, been on a negative trend of global average temperature at a linear rate of minus 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade. 
we can break the globe down into several significant regions. The Northern Hemisphere is cooling at a slower rate of minus 0.02 degrees Celsius per decade. The Southern Hemisphere is cooling at a faster rate of minus 0.19 degrees Celsius per decade. South America is cooling at an even faster rate of minus 0.39 degrees Celsius per decade, while North America is cooling at a very fast rate of minus 0.76 degrees Celsius per decade. What is the importance of this latest data and the current temperature conundrum? The hypothesis that the so-called greenhouse gases cause global warming is a fundamental building block of all IPCC reports since 1990, right up to the present time. It forms the basis of conclusions such as this to achieve deep reductions in global greenhouse gas emissions. It is the foundation upon which the Paris Agreement, Net Zero and the United Nations 2030 Agenda were built. It is the essence of COP27. But the current temperature conundrum with the increase in the atmospheric concentration of the greenhouse gases and the negative trend in global average temperature brings enormous doubt. The hypothesis must be questioned at COP27. So what should be done at COP27? The Paris Agreement, Net Zero and 2030 Agenda are essentially interlinked projects, programmes of work, Faced with an issue such as the modern temperature conundrum, an issue that could derail and invalidate each project, it is a good practice to objectively conduct a risk analysis of the issue. The United Nations and the World Economic Forum both have risk management capabilities. They should carry out the recommended risk assessment. The assessment should be global, but should also focus on individual cases such as North America, where using a linear trend projection, it is under the enormous risk of cooling by more than 7 degrees Celsius over the coming century. Our community combines the topics of globalism, nationalism, climate change, health and the new world order. If you would like to join our community, you can find us on locals.com slash discover. Just enter the new world order. This link will take you directly to our site.